The concept of Thor's hammer was for it to be one of the most powerful weapons ever created of an earthly origin. Created by Asgardian dwarven blacksmiths from the metal Uru, it was enchanted even more by Thor's circumstances to increase the weapon's strength and durability even more than this. In the oldest stories to feature Mjolnir, it was destroyed or shattered, ironically to prove just how durable it is. Later stories don't actually have it destroyed, rather lost, to show that even though the hammer itself is indestructible, but its wielder or the situation that it is in is weak, rather than the aspect of the hammer itself. The comic book discussion will be this. Realistically, can Thor's hammer be shattered or broken, or both? It's actually rather interesting or vague, because it all starts with what Thor's hammer is actually made of. Perhaps, arguably, the strongest metal of earthly origin, the Asgardian metal Uru, which arguably might be stronger than vibranium or adamantium, which in and of itself those alloys is another comic book discussion. Nearly every example of Uru metal, with the best being Mjolnir, has been magically enhanced or forged. There has technically been no example of Uru in its natural form, tested to see its durability, strength, conductivity, or composition. From what is known, it's actually rather ordinary, but it has extraordinary potential to be enchanted by magical means as discovered by ancient Asgardians. But even enchanting it is extraordinarily difficult. Only a being of godlike power can even craft or make the alloy malleable for it to be turned into any kind of conceivable weapon. Examples shown as nothing less than the heat of a burning star or mystically enchanted forge can turn Uru into a softer metal for it to be crafted. But once blacksmithed, it can be an extraordinarily durable weapon. It would also have to be with the actual blacksmith as well. The skill of the person who forged the Uru metal. Examples have been that though Mjolnir is the best known weapon of Uru metal, others have not fared so well. Mjolnir has survived being thrown at gods, devils, and interplanetary objects and have not been dented at all. And other weapons of Uru have been broken with the slightest touch. Why? Again, the connection between Uru and mystic energy can also depend on the user. For example, Thor can imbue his own strength into his weapon, thus making his Uru hammer even more stronger and resistant because of the enchantments, skill of the blacksmith, and Thor's own strength which all adds up to being nearly an indestructible weapon of Terran origin. But, as with anything earthly in origin, it can be shattered or broken. Yes, such events have happened and will be mentioned. Arguably, the first example of the hammer being broken was soon after his first appearance in Journey into Mystery, issue 83. The said incident occurred in issue 95 of Journey into Mystery. The hammer quote-unquote faded into nothingness, but still, the hammer was destroyed in this early story. The exact circumstances had Donald Blake, an alter ego of Thor, is forced to help a Professor Zaxton into building a duplicating ray. Once Donald gets a moment to himself, he transforms into Thor, whom he then rescues Jane Foster, whom Zaxton kidnapped. Thor himself gets caught in the ray during the process, and a copy of Thor is created. Saxton soon makes more copies of Thor, assuming that by having a clone army they could vanquish the original Thor. Soon the real and original Thor notices that the hits the clones are inflicting upon him don't hurt much at all, and realizes that the blows from their hammers are not worthy, hence they don't exist. With strikes from the original Mjolnir, the clones disappear from existence, the hammers along with them. Slightly confusing, but that was the Silver Age of comics, which is another comic book discussion entirely. The second example mentioned for this comic book discussion is in Journey into Mystery issue 118, where Thor first encounters the Destroyer. In modern portrayals, the Destroyer is an enchanted suit of armor with Uru metal. 
so fighting against the bewitched armor is a feat in and of itself. Thor eventually won the battle, but during the said fight, the destroyer used a particle energy beam and sliced a portion of the hammer right off. Once the battle is done, Thor tried to swing the hammer to leave the scene, but realized that the enchantment along with the stability of the hammer was gone. Again, with another Silver Age story, Thor had quote-unquote Norn stones, where he was able to magically transport back to Earth and use a regular human furnace in America, which was apparently just as enchanting qualities back as the Norwegian Viking Dwarven Asgard, allowing to fix Mjolnir just as quickly as it was broken. The third example mentioned takes place in Thor issue 294, where the backstory of Odin is actually explored. Apparently, Thor discovers that he as well as the other Asgardian gods and goddesses are actually replicas of another set of gods that once existed before history. These predecessors in turn replaced others who were more violent and non-peace-loving as they were, similar to a concept of never-ending loop of chaos in Rebirth. When a pair of ancient gods finds the hammer of the previous Thor, rather than keep it or use it or even enshrine it, they actually do something rather progressive and honorable. They discard it from their realm. The hammer eventually lands in another realm which will come to be the Asgard that the modern Marvel Universe refers to. The hammer actually decaying and breaking down naturally over the eons like any sort of metal or alloy, and actually turns into the Rheingold a substance heavily mentioned in Scandinavian mythology and Germanic texts. The fourth example is in The Avengers, Volume 1, Issue 215 in 1982. The Molecule Man theoretically is one of the most powerful beings in the 616 universe due to his absolute control and manipulation of molecules. The Molecule Man has an accidental encounter with the Silver Surfer and realizes the connection to Galactus and realize even further that devouring the Earth would make his already godlike power even more impressive. During a battle against the Avengers, he disintegrates Mjolnir with barely a thought, as well as vaporize Captain America's shield, Iron Man's armor, and Silver Surfer's board. The fifth example is in Thor, Volume 1, Issue 388, in 1988. The Celestials are among the most powerful group of cosmic beings within the Marvel Universe, rarely dealing with the gods or heroes or even villains of Earth. For they know that Celestials are too powerful to meddle with or interfere with for any conceivable reason. One story has Thor go up against Exitar, one of the Celestials charged with destroying planets deemed unworthy or disappointments. Thor took it upon himself to stop Exitar from the needless destruction. Fighting the Celestial, Thor managed to crack a hole inside its armor and head inside. Fighting extraordinary battles and even the God of Thunder went past his mortal limit, and at last found his way to Exitar's brain. Using one final attack of his, he hit the brain, but the strain was too much for Mjolnir and literally liquidated into a puddle from the result. Those are just some of the examples in older comics of Mjolnir being destroyed through battles and circumstances. It is nice to see the hammer being destroyed to give scope within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Of course it will be remade, repaired, because that's who Thor is. Using a hammer is one of his key aspects within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, perhaps even more so than the comics though it won't be destroyed as much as it has been within the comics as well. It is interesting to see what else might happen with the hammer.